Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, I'm going to be showing you how to change the blades on your DeWalt thickness planer. Yeah, I know, I know. He's already done this one before. But the video that we did before was for the 734 uh, thickness planer by DeWalt. And that video met with some really great response and uh, from what I understand through your comments it's really helped a lot of you out in changing your blades. But today's video is going to be all about this one and that would be the DeWalt 735 model. The first thing that we need to do in order to start the process of changing the blades of course is to access the blades. So let's start with that. So just to get you situated so that you know what we're looking at here, uh, here we have the top of our 735 planer. Um, this would be the in-feed side and this is the out-feed. And the first thing we need to do is get this top panel off. And for that, uh, we will be using the provided uh, T-wrench here, which stores conveniently at this point here. So for this particular step, these are Torx uh, bolts and what you want to do is just go ahead and remove all four of these Torx bolts and they're not uh, extremely long there's only a few threads there that hold them so we can just go ahead remove all four of these and then from there we can go ahead and lift this top uh, shroud off of the planer so this shroud just lifts right off, it's, it doesn't have any extra clips or snaps or anything and we'll just remove that and just put it aside for now and uh, we'll move on now to our, our next step in this process. Now the next thing here that we need to do is what this section here is, is the dust shroud um, which uh, uses this particular motor here to blow the chips out this back port but we need to remove this dust shroud in order to get access to the blades and that is done by removing these three red uh, wing nuts and they're kind of a funny design of a wing nut but they do make it so that very accessible and I'll just show you those wing nuts so you know what you're looking at but there are three of those, one here that I just removed, this one over here, and of course this one here. So we'll go ahead and remove all three of those and that'll provide us um, with the ability to remove this dust shroud in order to access the blades. So <clears throat> DeWalt's made this rather easy. Um, on the 734, of course, um, the dust shroud was held in by Phillips screws and uh, of course that required a second tool in order to access um, your blade. So once you get those three wing nuts removed, um, I don't know if you can see this here because there's a bit of dust and I'll provide a, a picture of it so that you can see it, but there is a line that runs right here and that lines up right now with the close position on this. You want to lift this up and rotate it until that line uh, lines up with the open position and then you'll be able to slide this dust shroud out and just remove it completely. Well we've got the cutter head exposed and now we need to get at the bolts, the retaining bolts uh, for these blades and even if you're changing up the blade because it's dull and it's not cutting the stock as well as you would like it to, uh, keep in mind it's still sharp enough that it'll give you a pretty good gash on your fingers. So just take a piece of scrap wood and you just want to rotate this blade assembly until it engages to expose um, those screw heads for you to work on and it uh, will just engage just like that and as soon as it engages this prevents it now from rotating any further. It's kind of a lock stop in there to keep it from turning 
And with that now being said, we've got all of our uh, retainer bolts now exposed. There's actually eight of them in each blade. At this point in time now, we can go ahead and remove all eight of these uh, Torx wrenches. And of course, once again, you don't need a separate tool in order to do this. Um, so as you're going along and you remove these screws, DeWalt actually, were, they were using their head in this design. And this little tray right here, its sole purpose in this entire unit is so that while you're changing the blades, you can place your screws in it so you're not dropping them into the machine and losing them. Bloody brilliant. Good for them for thinking on or thinking of that. So we're just going to go ahead now and remove the rest of these uh, screws. We've got two out and six more to go. So go ahead and remove all eight of those screws. All eight screws are removed and just like the 734 DeWalt in their onboard tool has provided um, the rare earth magnets here in the handle and by flipping it upside down we can just snap that onto our blade retainer and just take it out and place it off to the side of the planer and at this point now we have our blade exposed and using your rare earth magnets again just clamp on that blade and lift it right out now at this point don't get too funky and don't get too far ahead of yourself but you want to make sure that you know the rotation of your blade at this point and pay attention to which side of the blade is used but for now place it aside because this is a great opportunity while all of this is apart to give a good wipe here along the carriage, being careful not to contact the remaining blades that are in there. And it wouldn't hurt as well to get a vacuum or an air hose or something in here and give the interior of the planer a really good cleaning and a good wipe down. Right, so everything is wiped out and nice and clean and uh, we're ready to put the blade back in. Now this was the position that we took it out from. So what we need to do at this point in time now, this side here is the cutting edge. We need to spin this around just like that because on this model, just like the 734, these blades are reversible. So if it's just your first time changing this blade, that's great then you just need to rotate it. Of course, if you've already rotated it once and this is your second installation, then you wanna go on a, you're, you're gonna wanna change your blades up. But for this particular instance, because this is the first changing of the blades, we're just gonna rotate them. Now, some of you may be wondering about the alignment of the blade and DeWalt has made this actually pretty easy for us in the way that it has alignment pins on both sides of the blade carriage. One is here and one is right here. And those pins do allow for side to side tracking of the blade, but there is no movement um, front to back or in feed to out feed or inside roller to outside roller. It is stationary just the way it is. So it is preset at the factory. And at this point in time now, what you want to do is replace your blade retainer. And the important part here is, let me just see if I can show you this. You've got a recessed valley right here, but on this side of the blade retainer is a beveled edge. And that beveled edge is going to go on the side of the cutter blade. So you just want to lay that in place. Uh, you can use your magnetic tool that I seem to have misplaced. There it is. So just snap that on there just like so 
and this now will go down over your blade and you'll be able to see that your holes will align just right with that and now from there you want to replace those eight Torx bolts that we took out previously. So here's a little piece of advice when um, putting these Torx bolts back in. Whenever it comes to metal on metal or two dissimilar metals, um, for my liking anyway, I like to put a, either a little bit of white grease or um, some anti-seize compound onto these bolts uh, before I put them back in. It's very easy to get moisture in your shop and uh, you could get some corrosion which would uh, really make it difficult on later blade changes to get these out. So I'm not really going to bother with it for this particular time because these are still covered in the, the factory oil. Um, the planer is new enough for me that it's uh, that factory uh, lubricant hasn't worn off yet but the following change that I do, um, I will be applying some white grease or uh, anti-seize compound to all the threads on these retainer bolts. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and I am going to replace all of these bolts back in their original uh, threaded holes in the blade carriage. All eight bolts are in there and they're just loosely in there just to make sure we could get them all aligned. So now we're just going to go along and torque down. You don't need a ton of torque. Uh, you know, just maybe a half a grunt past snug kind of thing. Just give it a little bit of a torque just like that and uh, make sure that they're securely holding down that blade. Um, this blade retainer serves the purpose of holding the blade in place, but it also serves as the chip breaker um, for the planer blade. So you want to make sure that it, it is seated really well on the, uh, the flat surface of the blade. So like I said, just, you know, half a grunt past snug should, uh, should do you just fine. Now I'm just going to show you a little picture here, uh, and there it is. And that unit that I'm pointing at, or that little clip it looks like that I'm pointing at, that is the blade release to allow you to spin um, this entire blade assembly. So it's located, if you're facing the planer on the in-feed side, it's located on your left hand side. And I know it's hard to see from here, but all you do is you just give it a little push down. It's extremely easy to move and using your scrap of wood just give this blade assembly a spin just like that and there you go now you've got your second blade facing upright in order to expose all of these torque bolts here and basically at this point in time now your um, procedure is to repeat everything I've already shown you removing these eight bolts using your magnetic T-wrench to remove this blade retainer slash chip breaker. Don't forget your tool tray to put the bolts in when you remove them. Removing your blade, if it's your first time uh, changing that blade, don't forget they are reversible. Uh, T-wrench, rotate it, back down right onto the pins after giving the assembly a wipe. All eight bolts back in. Torque them down with uh, half a grunt past snug and uh, again if you don't have the factory lubricant still on them some white grease or anti-seize compound is going to go a long way to helping you later get those off and then repeat the process for the third blade because of course this planer does have three blades and you will need to release that retainer spin it one more time and repeat that process. So now what we've got is some painter's tape and you guys might remember me saying this in the other video but it's always a good idea to record in here um, 
when the last time you changed this blade out was. It's really easy to forget if you're not doing it all the time um, or who knows, it might be a year and a half before you change this blade out again. So I'm just gonna write here that this is the second edge. So that means that of course uh, the blade is done the next time I go to replace it. Uh, luckily for me, I keep them in my shop. And of course, today's date, which uh, we're a little bit behind for airing and uh, for the video. So this is June the 28th of 2015. And of course, we've got this on a little piece of painter's tape. And we're just going to peel this off. And once we get it peeled off, this uh, tool tray here affords a very nice little edge just to stick that on the inside of there. You're not marring up the inside of your uh, tool and you can very easily at a glance after removing the top shroud see exactly when it was that you changed that blade and whether or not you can rotate it or, or whether you have to replace it. Well now that we've got all three blades changed out, it's time to put this dust shroud back in. So I've zoomed the camera in just so I could clarify exactly what it is that I was talking about with this arrow. So if we slide our dust shroud into place here, you can see the words open right here and there's a line there. That line just lines up with that arrow and then you just gently slide it into place. It will only go in so far. Once it gets in to its limit, it's going to stop. And once you get it at that limit now, you want to just rotate it down into its place in the housing. Now, if you get any resistance here at all, stop. Don't push it any further. Check for your alignment to make sure that everything is aligned okay. And uh, it's, it's actually quite simple to do, as you can see, open, close. If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. And with the dust shroud in place, where it is supposed to go, we have these three uh, red wing nuts that I showed you earlier. And we're just going to get them in place, just loosely until you get all three threaded in. Sometimes it takes a little bit to align them. And uh, you want to be able to adjust this dust shroud from side to side if need be. So just go ahead and install all three of these wing nuts into the dust shroud. And once you get them installed in their place, you can snug them down. Keep in mind that although the threads of this are metal, the actual wing nut section that you're spinning itself is, uh, is plastic. So you're not going to put a socket wrench on this and crank it down. This puppy's just finger tight. Just give it a little snug, just like that, and that's all you need. Not a lot of torque on this one, guys. Just give it a little snug and you're done. You don't want to snap that off. And the final step here in this whole process is uh, putting the top cover back onto this um, machine. And I'm just going to give it a little wipe here. Um, now don't be concerned about which way this goes on because uh, I've tried, I'm actually putting it on backwards here, and I've tried, it doesn't fit. It does slide down, but you wouldn't bolt it in a million years. It doesn't even sit properly or seat properly. So you cannot put it in wrong. Um, another good feature when they eliminate human error and make it so that you can't screw it up. So it just slides into place as easily as that and then you know let me just show you one more thing here that's interesting um, these uh, bolts that are here that retain um, that retain your cover um, they don't come out so you can't lose these um, they're in there permanently so that's kind of a nice little feature um, where you're not losing parts so it just slides on just like that and again you just want to snug these up. It's a plastic cover. You don't need to torque this to like 45 foot-pounds of torque. 
you just want to snug it down. It's a plastic cover retained by metal screws. The metal will win every time and you will break the housing. So just give it a slight little snug. That's all you need. And then of course your wrench goes back in its handy little holder right there. And there you have it. Changing the blades on a 735. Um, key points. Cleaning the machine. You've already got the top off. You've got the dust shroud off from the uh, ejection port. Everything is wide open. Now is the time to do it. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of people that criticize me on the cleanliness of my shop, but you do not see my tools in disrepair. And part of that is keeping them clean. And, uh, you know, dust and uh, sawdust, chips, whatever, wood attracts moisture. So if you've got a tool that is full of chips and sawdust, it's attracting moisture to the interior of your tool. And try as you might, you can't fight moisture once it starts getting into the metal. You're going to have a problem. So you've got it apart. Clean it out. Um, that magnetic tool, it's a fantastic little thing. Use it. Don't, uh, don't get your fingers on that blade. It's sharper than you realize. Um, ask me how I know. Moving right along. Um, it's nice now that DeWalt has uh, come along and provided a single tool blade replacement. Um, like I said earlier in the video on the 734, as much as I love that planer, uh, changing out the blades could be a little cumbersome only because of the separate tools that were required to do it being a Phillips screwdriver and I believe the 734 also ran on um, Allen keys to retain the bolts uh, or to retain the blades. I much prefer the Torx. A um, lot less chance for me of stripping them out but the single tool is nice I know it's only another screwdriver, but it's one more thing to either forget and have to go over and pick up, or it's just another screw that you're going to end up losing. Um, that screw tray on the inside of the housing, brilliant, brilliant. Something so simple that makes the change that much easier because now there's no fumbling around of what happened to that screw. Did I lose that screw? Is it in the machine, etc., etc.? Um, in comparison, the 734 to the 735, access to the blade on the 735 is far superior. And the main reason for that, of course, is that the 734 is a box planer. So no matter how much you try to open up that housing to access those blades, although it's not difficult, you will always have the roof of the box planer right in your way. Um, of course, DeWalt provided ample room to change the blades on a 734, but when it comes to changing on the 735, you can't beat the ample room of up to your ceiling, of course, when it's all wide open like that. Um, in a nutshell, it's a very easy change. Don't forget to clean it all out. And uh, I hope this video has helped those of you who weren't sure or who were a little iffy on taking apart their 735 because uh, it can be intimidating taking apart a tool. Guys, I hope this video has helped those of you who have a DeWalt 735. Uh, if not, if there are those of you that are considering a 735 and this is one of your aspects that you were wondering how hard it was, I hope this has helped you make a decision. So. Thanks for watching, guys, and you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.